starting off with a Halucha too. Yeah, this uh, this could be a little dangerous. Rule would love to see some uh, some more cards added to the hand. So maybe an additional Mulligan here as well would be nice because uh, <laughs> we know how fragile uh, Lost Box can be. Finding that the opening the comb phase to get those additional cards into the Lost Zone, get those cards in your hand, and then find that Colorless Experiment. When you get all that rolling and get the early attacks off, uh, you're going to feel very comfortable. If not, you're just a single prize deck that attaches energies once per turn and gets really sad. Well, we're going to see uh, the MVP of two weekends ago in the active spot squad Woo! for Justin here. That's Maybe what I'm talking about. I don't think we'll see a nest stash uh, this early, but hey, it, it could happen. <laughs> I, I've seen crazier <laughs> things. It's going to be pretty interesting to see who's going first in this match because Justin's hand has no basic Pokemon, no way to get basic Pokemon. You might need a nest stash just because <laughs> the nature of Cramorant. This is so dangerous, okay? Well, for Raul, it is one Cramorant in the prize cards. Still has a second one and double research for Justin. One of those Arceus Vs that may have been helpful too. So all in all, we should be able to find a decent game. If these hands start to figure themselves out, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it is all about who won that opening coin flip as these players are eyeing down to get ready. I don't think anyone's confident right now looking at these hands. Yeah, it's just like, oh boy. Can we just go to game two? <laughs> Both players will take the win, I guess, take the loss. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, let's just go to game three. Yeah, game yeah, three. That, that, can we just agree on that? We'll see. Yeah, a lot of a lot of energies in the opening hand. At least a judge over there on Justin's side. So maybe if going second could uh, work that into the mix and find some help. but. This could be a uh, another theme deck fight to start things off. And there is the fist bump, and it looks like Rahul is going first. So it's going to have a little breath of relief for Justin here in that squavit. And there is a level ball. Going to be able to search the deck, find a Kumfe. Yep, that is going to help things out a little bit here. I believe we saw at least a switch cart uh, in the hand as well. So we should be able to look at a few cards hopefully build up a, a decent hand for the following turn. But your opponent didn't really start very well either, it looks like, <laughs> with just the Squavit. So uh, maybe you do feel pretty comfortable with just the one selecting for now. Now, the Halucha starting it, it's a little bit awkward. You don't have the ability to bring back Pokemon into your hand anymore with the loss of Scoop Up Net from the previous rotation. So you just don't have access to that Halucha anymore. You're not going to have extra damage counters flying around. Could you imagine using Scoop Up Net with this? Oh Just the, the better Glarian Zigzagoon over and over again. And already a, a little awkward flower selecting. That Radiant Charizard found along with that Beach Court. That Beach Court is not in play. It's in the Lost Zone. Yeah, it does It does look like it's in play. So good, good <laughs> clarifying there. But yes, it is, uh, it's in the Lost Zone there. And that just shows the importance of that Radiant Charizard. Of course, having the Beach Court, being able to Find some additional help and switch between these confades <laughs> would have been great. But Roll it out a big bro. It's like, dude, that's not how you play Pokemon. All you have is a Squavit and four cards. If you don't find anything, you're going to lose. But that's trust, what you have to do. Trust in the nest dash, Kyle. I mean, I, I almost wanted to play energy there. I feel that bad. <laughs> I, don't, I don't expect anything good to happen here. And before, it's uh, Arceus V, double turbo, double turbo switch, switch, and then Giratina. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that's good. All, All right. right. We, we got Pokemon. <laughs> Double Nest Ball found off the judge here. It's going to allow Justin to search the deck for basic Pokemon, put it on the bench. Almost for surely going to see that Arceus V, the, the namesake of the deck. Yep. Use the golden one as intimidation purposes first, and then follow <laughs> up with the secondary Nest Ball. Very strong strategy here from Justin. I don't think that's a strategy. I, uh, I've i seen it employed. Never in my deck, because I can't afford it. But <laughs> here Makes we go. Sense. Number two. And now with this Nest Ball, do you just eye down getting the Giratina, another Arceus? Is Arceus your main attacker in this match? Um, you're, you're looking to find the Arceus. As it's a Pokemon that can certainly stick around for a long time. If you are playing cards like Charon's Care, then you have that opportunity to uh, bring that Pokemon back up and heal off any of those additional damage that was thrown into the mix from the Lost Box deck and maybe stick around for some additional turns. So definitely expect to see multiple Arceus Vs over the course of this match. 
Giratina just doesn't really line up too well unless you're just using the Giratina V itself. Now, with all being said, that still was a pretty good judge from Justin there. You get two Arceus V in play, you get an energy attachment, and then you have a judge for next turn. Which Rahul almost already guaranteed knows about when yeah. you don't see Nest Dash happen. He's like, that is a good card. I know it's something solid. It could be Arceus V-Star, it could be another supporter. So Rahul certainly knows that this has to be a solid turn here. And here we see the Hisuian Heavy Ball roll is going to look at the prize cards, get a basic Pokemon, put it in your hand, and then you swap it out with that Hisuian Heavy Ball. And one big thing that Roll is doing is writing down your prize cards. Uh, who needs to check through your deck to <laughs> see what's prize when you can just look at them? Yep. So often you're thinking about infinite possibilities over and over again. So just uh, have them written down so you can check on those throughout the game and remind yourself what's going on. And uh, also cross them out when you draw them. Yes. Because <laughs> then you go, oh, man, I don't even remember which prize was what. I took that, but then I got judged. What happens? Yeah, the best thing you can do is always just keep track of the game state, of the options that you have available to you, and especially in a deck like Lost Box. Well, Rahul may have an opportunity to find that Colworth's experiment. Really looking for it, but doesn't find it. Has the boss's orders instead. <laughs> just can't help but laugh. <laughs> well, that's a, I guess that's a card. Yeah, Pokegear 3.0 has not really been very good for a lot of these players. <laughs> uh, I went 0-4 at Worlds with it. I yeah. uh, desperately needed it to work at least once. <laughs> well, there is that switch cart roll just retreating with the sign of the coin. Bring up a new Comfey, use its flower selecting. Yep, a lot of these secondary supporters see the Roxanne in hand, boss's orders, just things you don't really want to find early on. You'd love those in the mid game to end game. It's also something you don't really see in a lot of the other Lost Box variants that we've had, where they're playing four Colchis experiments, two Clara, and then one Roxanne or one Judge, maybe. But this is just pretty heavy. Two bosses orders, Roxanne, Raihan even. Yeah. It is nice to have that Raihan when you're playing uh, this Radiant Charizard version, having the potential to surprise your opponent, bring that Pokemon out of nowhere, use Excited Heart, and also uh, get the additional energy, and maybe you can attack a turn earlier than your opponent's expecting. Well, Justin was excited to play that Judge. First thing <laughs> for the turn, draws a bunch of supporters, but Ooh. Ultra Ball is hiding out in there. Yep. That is a good one. As we see, that is going to lead to this Arceus V-Star, Star Birth. And we could certainly see the, uh, the double turbo in combination with a switching effect. Get an attack off and start to accelerate these energies. Yep, Star Birth. Use your V-Star marker. Allows you to search your deck for any two cards. Put them in your hand. Most of the time with Arceus V-Star, you search for that double turbo. <laughs> Yes. You need it. <laughs> yep. There's no real way to, to find that card in any other situation. So there it is. We're going to see those immediately eyed up. No need to shuffle as going to go right back into the deck with this knockout. No need to nest dash either. You got that professor's research for the next turn. And this is the game plan Justin wants to do. Just attack every turn, charge up some uh, big Pokemon V, and hope it's good enough. Yep. Rahul certainly understands that... Uh, this is going to happen in this matchup. You're going to lose a lot of prizes early on. Once oh, again, wow. the second time he sees the Radiant Charizard. Yeah. <laughs> this time it's a fire energy. And to be fair, that beach court's also pretty important too, just because you can't attack with Radiant Charizard using its excited heart ability if Path to the Peak is in play. There's four of those copies in Justin's deck. Exactly. Yeah, that's something that we will have to look out for. As you need that ability to attack with this Pokemon. You're never going to get all five energies down and attack into the Arceus. Ooh, oh, another no. fire energy. Is that the only other one? Usually it's just two copies. Yeah. yeah. The other fire energy to go along with that Poke Gear, which Rahul desperately needs that Colrus's experiment. Still has not been able to find it. Does have enough with all those flower selectings for lost pres pr provisions so you can spit innocently for the knockout. Yeah, we can see it's a, a solid turn just taking that knockout there. Unfortunate that we didn't see a supporter to go along with it there. Now for Justin, drew the V-Guard energy. It's not really going to be that good. You got four energy on that Arceus V now, but it's really, you don't want to discard it. Yeah. So now we do see some additional cards thrown into the mix. 
Another Good. Arceus V-Star. Yep. yep, solid to find that Pokemon early on. Just make sure that you have the hit points locked in play here. And then uh, the bench management from this point can certainly get interesting. You've already lost that single prize in the Squavit. Uh, it's great to have the, the Beeberl as an option to continue to draw at points, but it's a liability too. If you lose this Pokemon, uh, it's just going to be those two V-Star knockouts uh, to close out the game. And you can really see Justin debating that here. Even having the Ultra Ball in hand as well, opting just to take the knockout. And I think that's just the fact that you don't want to give your opponent another easy prize. Right. Uh, your opponent's clearly struggling. They don't want to just attack into Arceus V-Star and try to soften it up. If they had a boss's orders, uh, it'd be a pretty easy knockout there. And it's instead, Rahul is going to have to start to chip away at this big Pokemon, which is kind of where Justin wants him. Granted, without Beaverol in play, this Arceus Giratina deck does tend to kind of just run out of gas late game. Uh, there's, you play a lot of supporters to help you find the cards you need, and once you get the cards you need, you don't really need much of anything else. But one of those cards is going to be that Charon's Care, potentially. Yeah, there's, a, there's an interesting dance as you're trying to find the right turn, and we see Rahul uh, holding on to that rock sand. That's the one card that we really need to look out for in the matchup, as Justin's not usually getting his hand reset from a Lost Box deck. And the turn where you're expecting the Radiant Charizard is a great turn to play down the Bidoof, as you know that it's not going to get targeted. They have to try to work in a knockout instead. It's interesting to see the Rescue Carrier in there. I, I haven't really looked at a lot of the, the Radiant Charizard Lost Zone list, but uh, it is a pretty good card, especially you're playing three Sableye. Yeah, yep. finding the, the right Pokemon, bringing them back. Maybe you deal with that early, in, early uh, Radiant Greninja from an opponent, and you can just bring back Comphase and continue to get those cards into the Lost Zone. So it's a, a nice one of inclusion. And here we see Justin starting off Ultra Balling away that 1-1-B barrel line for the Giratina V. Now, this is an interesting attacker in this list, uh, it's most likely not going to reach the V-Star, right? Right, yeah. Uh, Shred deals with every Pokemon that you want to at this stage. Well, I guess with the double turbo, you're not <laughs> going to go to the Radiant Charizard anymore. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, a, a very solid attacker uh, in this matchup. 220 hit points, not too bad either. And what looks like the third judge of the game here, Roll may have broke a sleeve. Yep, just let the judge help you out in those situations and continue to shuffle let up a little bit. Let the judge help you out while playing judge. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. Good. Uh, judge on judge on judge. All right, both players shuffling up. Draw four cards. Justin has pretty much everything going. All my cores are still in my deck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rahul says, all my cores are still in my deck. <laughs> and he found one finally. Hey. Uh, I'd say just in time, but I, I don't believe it. <laughs> I think it may be a little late, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Now looking at the hand for Justin, I think Raihan? Is that? They're all the, the like secret rare ones. It's, it's, it is very shiny over there. Oh, it's interesting to see the retreat here. Yeah, sometimes you uh, can get that second attack from a Cramorant or uh, maybe see the Sableye add additional damage to it. Of course, that can happen from any point, but there's only five cards in the Lost Zone, It looks, or six in the Lost Zone now, so it's not super realistic that we see all ten, but uh, who knows at this point. And there is that Trinity Nova taking the knockout on Cramorant yet again, and going to be able to charge up one of those Pokemon Vs on the bench. Looking like two basics on that Giratina, and nothing else. Yep, Rahul thinking to himself, is there ever a world where I need to find a Roxanne or do anything early first, or is it just slam down the Colrus, get these cards in the Lost Zone? Maybe Sable, I can help me uh, get across uh, the early finish line in, in just taking one prize card to, to get the ball rolling, or one Sa knockout. Sableye, another stadium in that Pokestop, and actually getting rid of the Roxanne there. Yeah, it looks like game is going to be on board no matter what, so it doesn't matter what hand disruption is really happening. You just need to make sure that you're keeping up in the, the prize exchange. So if there is a world where you can take the knockout on uh, an Arceus V-Star at some point, maybe you can go back-to-back -back Radiant Charizards, but... Oh, the, no. All the, right. Yeah. 
Focus stop, discarding that Radiant Charizard, oh. finding a couple of items there. But no item to really... Is there a switch out? I don't see anything, man. Yeah, all right, <laughs> yeah, we're going to game two. This is dangerous. I, even even if you were able to hold on to the Radiant Charizard uh, at that point, you needed a knockout on that turn, uh, or you'd need to have an, a, an Echoing Horn combination, which uh, there is one in the list, but you'd need to have it at the perfect time. It had to have been right then and there. So not having that means that the, the prize exchange was never going to go in Ruhl's favor, understandably scoops the game up there and gives himself an opportunity to maybe play a good, uh, decent game two and potential game three. Listen, that's all Justin is here for. Good, decent games. That's what you're hoping for with Arceus V-Star. As seemingly, as long as you draw an energy, your V-Star, get a U-Star birth, things pretty much go the same. Yeah, it's it's nice, fair Pokemon, yeah. which usually doesn't work in this game, but being able to hand disrupt and avoid those abilities is just very strong. Always being able to guarantee that you're likely going to get a turn two knockout in this matchup, accelerate those energies, and you pretty much know every turn which Pokemon's going to be attacking from here on out. Which is pretty crazy to think that Justin started that game off with <laughs> Squabba in the active judge. judge. Yeah. <laughs> It worked out. Double nest ball MVP as uh, it led to a decent setup. And I'm, what else could we say about Rahul's start? That was abysmal. Just trying to find the right pieces with the Comfey. Never really found anything helpful. Had to make awful decisions uh, looking at Radiant Charizard multiple times off of uh, the Comfey. And then eventually loses it to the Pokestop. Looking to have a little better start this game too. Meanwhile, looks like Justin's going to opt to start that oh, V-Doof over the Giratina V. Yep. If you do just lose that one single prize Pokemon, uh, you end up in a pretty favorable position. You just keep all those Vs in play. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. <laughs> well, we've talked about this before for Arceus decks. I don't know why this is a trend that they just prize three double turbos, but this might be the only deck that's like kind of OK with it because of Starbirth finding the fourth. It's still not good. <laughs> Listen, I found the fourth, and it's in the hand. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll likely see it play down then pretty quickly, as that's the turn for Raul. As, yeah, uh, flower selecting, bench Cramorant pass. Ooh. I mean, you don't do much as the uh, Lost Rock player on turn one going first, but you still would like to have at least, like, switch card, second Compe something. Meanwhile, Justin discards two V-Star Pokemon, Giratina V-Star and Arceus V-Star. It's going to search out the Arceus V, have a double turbo energy for it, and then I think we got a clean research. Okay. Are we talking high five? or, or I, I don't think people do that anymore. Oh, I definitely high five yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure you have, you know, all the other V-Stars in the deck you need. Maybe a couple double turbo, but I don't know. I might not be looking for that if you already have the one in hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, you've, you've seen everything that you wanted so far. It's it's ready to go. The dream for Arceus builds is just energy, Arceus, and something. And then, sure enough, we see all of that with the potential oh, no. to draw with this. There's another Arceus oh. V-Star in hand, actually. Yeah, you might actually just hold it here. Wow. All yeah. Right. I mean... We still know that there's good cards. You Ultra Ball to an Arceus yeah. V-Star. But, uh, yeah, it's a wise play to hold on to those pieces. Yeah, I guess the one thing you're kind of hoping for is a switch so you can Trinity Charge, but you don't really need to. Uh, it'll put your Arceus V kind of in harm's way of Spit Innocently. Well, Rahul here from Rahul. saw just Clara. Oh. And he had to consider if he even wanted it. There's no cards in the discard pile. Not exactly what you're looking for there. He wants to perform experiments. Maybe. Uh, with, with a scientist named Colorus. Yes. You get a cool hat. Switch cart. Hoping to find that Colorus' experiment with this flower selecting. Ooh. And there we go. Ooh. That was the fastest Lost Vacuum went to wow. the Lost Zone. Yep. We found the hat. We're ready to roll. Sableye found off of this, and looks like the rest of it wasn't great. There's still no energies in hand, too, so. I think there's like a level ball, Hisuian heavy ball, pokey gear. 
Is there no way to bring up the Cramorant this turn? That feels weird. Is there no energy in Rolls? Yeah, I don't think there was an energy, and I don't know if there, I saw a switching effect Ooh. either. Uh, tricky here, but... It's like, with the Hisuian Heavy Ball going, that means no access to that Sableye in the prize cards, but there's still three in the list. Oh. See Pokegear for next turn as well, but the fan of the hand didn't look that strong. It's going to be a oh, missed opportunity, is... it looks like, to take a knockout. No, no, you just force Justin to use Switch. That's, that's what's really going yes, on. Yes, yes. The deep resource <laughs> management battle on turn one and a half. I love it. Whoa. Arceus V-Star, energy. energy. No I-5. Tough, top. tough, tough. Can he find the Switch without having to use the Star Birth? Finds the escape rope. Wow. I think here you just... I like it. Star Birth for the B-Barrel. <laughs> I... I kind of just want to rope and get moving. I, I kind of want to hold Starbirth for a little bit. Nest Ball is going to search the deck, grab another Arceus V. It's really what you're going to want to be charging up, trying to loop those Trinity Novas. We'll see if Justin's considering anything else. I guess with the way that this rolls you're just gonna use the rope you should probably shuffle because but i mean you're, you're gonna always bring up the the arceus v star so yeah we can skip that part i guess roll switches come phase the shiny and, one yep the shiny one tough and there is that trinity nova taking the knockout three energy on to justin's board now most likely going to that arceus v especially with those double turbos in the prize cards yep. to be fair there is also switch in the prize cards okay uh, so <laughs> escape rope was justin's only out that's sick <laughs> yeah able to hold on to the star Wars because of the seventh card there found on the professor's research it's uh exactly the odds that rahul's not looking to run into <laughs> Roll is going to start things off with a nest ball of his own. Going to eye down what looks like the second Sableye. Yeah, with five cards in the lost zone here, and certainly would be a, a stretch to get to, to 10 in this spot. You'd have to have that third Comfe in there, a lot of switching effects to get the ball rolling, or uh, perhaps something like a lost vacuum uh, to help out in the mix here. But we also don't see anything to target with the lost vacuum in play. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to have some, like, pokey stop, lost vacuum the pokey stop after grabbing you three items. And Which is really bad because <laughs> you want to have that for, for uh, the pass to the peaks that are come down in the yeah. mid-game, mid so. Flower selecting here. Gets rid of the choice belt, and that's a big one because it allows Radiant Charizard to hit that 280 number up against Arceus V-Star. Yep. Along with uh, the Giratina V-Star, too, if that ever gets into the mix. And that is the other choice belt there that we saw. Uh, so still one left in the deck hanging out. Pokegear does find Chorus's experiment, finally, for Rahul here. And that's going to allow him to build up the Lost Zone counter a little bit more. Yeah, but again, sure. still needing a lot of help. There was, uh, there's a ton of cards in hand, but they're, they're just not coming together right now, I think. They're all cards you want for like three turns from now. Yeah, yeah. If you can hold on to this hand forever, which never happens because your opponent plays Judge, <laughs> then you're great. But this is a, a dangerous spot for sure. That was an easy chorus. A couple energy and then a couple switching outs. I think Rolls was trying to see if you can actually get to that number. It's an hang on 10. now. Yeah. I, I think he's debating between taking the escape rope and the switching cart. It is a, it's a hefty commitment if you're not going to work the Lost Vacuum in. You need to have that final bench space uh, as a Comfe. There's also a Nest Ball in there, too. So. And then you lose all your energies, which yeah. is dangerous. So it uh, looks like I'm going to keep those energies around for a little bit. Arden, Escape Rope in hand. This is going to bring up another Comfe for Flower Selecting, and we're going to move into nine. Yep, there is a switch cart in hand. So if another come face found, then that could be an out to getting that 10th card in the wall zone. 
Halucha. Halucha energy. That's Goodbye. not what you want. See the psychic energy. It's going to be used for the retreat for the Cramorant just to take the knockout on that Bidoof. Yep, certainly reasonable here. It's a ton of resources to even get to that 10th spot, so missing out there, at least being able to score the knockout feels pretty solid. You do play cards like that Echoing Horn, which can be pretty relevant. You could bring that Pokemon back into play, uh, get some chip damage onto uh, Pokemon like these Arceus V Stars so that you don't need that choice belt to take the knockout and then also. Uh, score that even number prize card with that Bidoof as well. Now Rahul did spend all the turn building up the hand for the next few turns, but we know Justin <laughs> and we know shame. our ESV star <laughs> and we know uh, they play a lot of supporters named Judge. Yeah, imagine if you still had Starbirth too and you still don't have to use it. That is not what Rahul wants to see. That's, that's the perfect answer here. Knockout lined up against the only Guaranteed attacker right now, as we already saw. No energies left on board, that Psychic in the discard pile, and nothing's really guaranteed with this deck. It is crazy to me that Justin has not used Starbirth at all, and still probably won't. Yeah, I mean, if we see just the perfect cards off here, if you're able to avoid energies, you continue to thin those out every time that you're attacking with your Arceus V-Star, you continue to take the knockouts, and maybe you get to hold on to that for one of those last few turns. Sure enough, finds another judge. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Do your thing. Let him cook. <laughs> He's cooking. Yeah, I don't even think you really need to do anything else here. You, you really just have to play the judge to disrupt Raul. Exactly. And as long as you do that every turn, you're fine. Yep. Anytime your opponent gets above five or six cards, they probably got something for next turn. So just continue to bring them back down, take knockouts, and uh, set up this board state where every Pokemon is going to be able to take a knockout. And with that, Trinity Nova takes the prize card, charges up that Giratina V. And we're just going to start things off with Flower Selecting. Tenth card in the Lost Zone, finally. And it looks like grabbing the Mirage Gate. Yeah, we do see that in hand. I'm not sure the order and how everything fell there, but Escape Rope going to continue on. Maybe looking for a few more resources, as this is still a fresh hand for Rahul. Switching to that other Comfey, Flower Selecting yet again. Finds another Colrus at the cost of a Sableye, but you got two, it's fine. Yeah, I think that's certainly a win there. Able to find five cards higher here. energy and the belt. But their choice belt, that's the last one. Yeah, this starts to get tricky as you're trying to manipulate the damage. You start to think about the additional uh, damage that you could leave with the Lost Mine to try to help out in these knockouts. Ooh, He's going to do it without the in. belt. I, I think there was kind of an avenue where Rahul might have had the knockout on Arceus V-Star this turn, but it would require the Mirage Gate getting two energies, attaching an energy, and that belt on a Radiant Charizard. And I just think you needed four of those five cards in that course. And then that's all your energies, you are completely Clara dependent yeah. after that knockout, which is so dangerous. So understandably going to go this route instead. And now here with Lost Mine, you're going to want to just spread damage to where you can clean up in the following turns with Radiant Charizard. So we're going to see a few damage each on those Arceus V-Star. And damage on that Giratina V, maybe. Uh, again, like we said earlier, the Giratina V is not really be going to become the V star unless it really needs to. Yeah. There is a world where you just go like 6-3-3 three, three and try to s split it up there so that every uh, attack could be a knockout with Radiant Charizard, and I do like seeing that here. Well, we got another Judge for Justin's side of things, and it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'd be interested to see if we see the Arceus V come down this turn, as uh, there would be that opportunity. 
uh, to maybe work in that Sharon's Care, have a Pokemon that actually has 280 hit points if it's not targeted on the following turn, and uh, that completely avoids uh, running into those issues with the lost mind damage. I think Justin has to be careful, though, is you don't have access to that last Arceus V-Star. It's in the discard pile, so you are relying on that Sharon's Care. Yep. We still see the Starbirth ability is available at any point. It's looking it's like we're we're hitting the V Star button. It time, <laughs> all right. Star Birth. Justin's going to search the deck for two cards now. Path to the Peak could maybe be one of them. I need the Sharon's Care early here. Yeah, I almost feel like this, that's a that's a next turn kind of spot. If you could play down this Arceus V and then eventually. Uh, switch into that Pokemon, but gonna go for that now along with that path to the peak Maybe you could avoid the radiant Charizard in some form there All right, Charon's care path to the peak are the cards found off Starbirth And I, I think I agree with you. I think this is a little early But is going to pick up that one with six on it <laughs> Rule just smiles and says, oh, man, <laughs> I, I wanted to knock out that Pokemon. <laughs> There's that double turbo again. Path to the peak. Now all rule box Pokemon are not allowed to use their abilities. Granted, Justin already used all his abilities. The one. Yes, yeah. There's only one ability you really care about for your Vs, and uh, it was pretty good there as it's able to help out in healing that Pokemon on the bench. Get that path locked into play. Maybe you can avoid the Radiant Charizard. Rahul's going to be thinking about that for sure. And ooh, I think that was the Echoing Horn found too. So uh, getting uh, one of those single prize Pokemon into play at some point would be lovely. Echoing Horn, also uh, the boss's orders in hand. Rahul's going to start to turn off though with a Nest Ball. Grab that Radiant Charizard. You don't want to find that off Flower Selecting. Not again. <laughs> again. Yeah, we've, we've, again. We've seen that go poorly. And we're going to have the Mirage Gate as well. This is going to charge up a Fire to the Radiant Charizard and a Psychic to that Sableye. Yep. Currently no Excited Heart online, so still looking for a way to counter that path to the peak. There might be an answer in the hand here. We'll see. The, the way Rahul built his deck, you do have a lot of outs. You got the two Pokey Stop, the Beach Court, and two Lost Vacuum. Oh, found the Pokestop there at the cost of a switch. Does have the switching cart in hand, so that would be pretty solid there. And has the energy for the turn as well, so countering that excited heart back online. That means we should see a knockout here. Switch cart in hand, or? Yep. Okay. Oh, and found off. Oh, that Ooh. is a great Pokestop. <laughs> Let him cook. Finds three items, all go to the hand. Rescue Carrier here is going to grab back Sableye and a Comfey, or just the Sableye. Yep, and at this point, play down as many cards as possible. Make sure that you get maximum use out of all of these resources, as you know your opponent is likely to be using Judge uh, throughout the rest of the game. I know, good cards on the other side from both players. But this is as good as it gets, namesake of the deck, that Radiant Charizard finally going to get into the mix. And you are, your eyes are not deceiving you. There's two energy on there, five for the attack, but the Excited Heart ability lowers your attack's colorless energy for every prize card your opponent's taken. So because of that, Raul's able to deal 250 damage, take the knockout on that Arceus V-Star. And here we're going to see the fruit of, the, of Charon's work. Yep, Arceus V-Star going to come down. The judge is in hand. The Echoing Horn was not played which can be understandable as you don't want to give your opponent access to the Bidoof, and then they just evolve it into Bibaral, and then it's 120 damage. You're going to lose out on getting to place any of those extra damage counters onto the Arceus V-Star. So uh, understandably missing out on that, but we might have a hard time finding it again, as this is the judge. All right. I, I believe this is the, the third or fourth judge of this game. 
And this is what Arceus V-Star does. Judge, eventually path, attack, Yep. repeat. Slam the gavel over and over again, and hopefully you send your opponent to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to court very much. Is that how it works? Objection. <laughs> Overruled. Hearsay. All right. <laughs> LeBron Wool's going to check it out, too. Four cards for Justin here. Does find Ooh. the path to the peak of boss's orders to go along with it. Rahul finds poke stop. Yep. That is and the out. Fog crystal. If there's, I don't know if there's an energy left though. I, I don't believe so. But there's that energy on the sable eye on the bench. There's the knockout. And this is the awkward part. Do you just bring up the sable eye? Like if you draw Clara, then you just. Yeah, I feel like. It's, it really depends on your at your switch counts at this point, if you felt comfortable with that. Obviously, Pokestop could help you in finding those resources, but if we found uh, Echoing Horn on this turn, could you imagine being able to, to knock out that Bidoof, place 30 on the Arceus V-Star and on the Giratina V? You can guarantee that you have one of these V knockouts lined up for Radiant Charizard as your last two prize cards. That's uh, everything that you're looking for. Well, there's only about eight cards left in Roll's deck. You're going to poke a stop, try to find that Echoing Horn. It was at the bottom before this Fog Crystal. And then also not discard the Clara. Maybe you no, find no, no, the no. Poke Gear that gets you the Clara. One supporter, oh, two supporters. No. Oh, tough. That doesn't work. Level ball in hand. Oh, no. Yeah, that is awful. and you're essentially on a two-turn clock. You need to take three prizes by next turn. And I don't think it's possible here with the way Roll is drawn. Yeah, you can boss up this only Pokemon that doesn't have enough energies to take a knockout. Think about the damage spread, still considering just the, the three, getting every Pokemon within range of Radiant Charizard. All right, 30 on the active, 90 on that benched Arceus. I think if the Halucha was around, there'd be a world where you could play all the damage onto the Giratina V. That's in the Lost Zone, though. But it's gone, so this is the, the optimal play. The problem is you need your opponent to miss on the knockout here. And, I mean, you can still just retreat out of this spot and then have to go back for the boss, but I don't even know if we have the resources for that. Yeah, Roll would need the last boss's orders in the deck. And just hope that... Oh, the hand is yeah. juice! It, it, it's very good. Energy, double turbo. It looks like a, what a boss's orders as well. There's, there's so much that Justin can work with here, trying to get these last two prize cards. But I love the diligence, just checking all of the resources, wants to play around any potential issue here. Energy on the active. I, I guess you could just shred, right? It, it, yeah. At this point, it's, it, it's probably the best call. You don't really want to retreat. You don't want to make this Pokemon a potential uh, boss target, and just to start burning through the deck. Give yourself uh, potential. To maybe find that path and really guarantee that these Pokemon stick around. Squoby? Yeah. Never Squoby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about benching a, a 60 HP Pokemon right now. <laughs> Are you sure? Granted, I still think Oral wouldn't be able to take the win. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't line up. Uh, Would have been a little short. Echoing Horn found <laughs> off the top. All <laughs> this right. is the very next <laughs> card, <laughs> and Rahul can't help but laugh, <laughs> and then has to make a choice between Switch Cart and the Clara. That's going to be a, an easy decision, as you need those energies. No, well, it's not an easy decision. It still hurts. It's, like, yeah, it's, that's true. Like, how are we going to get out of the active spot? That's one. Yep. There you go. That's the easiest way to get out of the active. Shake your opponent's hand and let's move on to the next round of the tournament as Justin Kulas 2-0 and here uh, in round number four in a, a very solid performance, just showing off the consistency of this build. Arceus V-Star uh, won in Portland for a reason. And it's doing pretty well to start things off here. 4-0 for Justin Kulas with 
a pretty similar list. I guess changing up a few cards and really putting that Terran's Pair to work. I mean, you could have paired any Pokemon with Arceus V-Star in that matchup, and it would have been the exact same outcome. It could have been your Reggie Drago list, yeah. for all I care. <laughs> it could be any Pokemon V, and uh, we would have seen the same outcome. Uh, Giratina just not very relevant in a matchup like that, and uh, Justin understood the game plan going in. Just try to avoid uh, giving your opponent those easy knockouts with the Radiant Charizard, and uh, was able to do just that with uh, the use of the Path to the Peak and the continual judging. Yeah, it is... Pretty crazy to think that Arceus is really just the enabler for all these kind of random Pokemon V, uh, Pokemon V Star, V Maxes. Uh, we have seen a lot of random stuff throughout the floor. Uh, there's a Lycanroc V Max or V Star. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a there's, uh, Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl. Yeah. Like a uh, <laughs> four three Aerodactyl V Star. Uh, it's pretty crazy, but that's Arceus V Star paired with Path and Judge. Uh, Name a more better three-card combo. I'll wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's just so strong. We've seen it over and over again. It just, it's it's not that it does anything spectacular. It's not breaking game states or doing anything uh, that you shouldn't be able to do in the TCG. Usually, you have to find a deck that breaks a rule in Pokemon in order to continually uh, come out on top, like accelerating all these additional energies and whatever. And yeah, Arceus doesn't do Arceus that. Arceus does it a little <laughs> bit. It's but the like, main point. Yeah, but as an attack, though, not like cheating abilities, like Archeops loading yeah, yeah. up these Pokemon <laughs> out of nowhere. And uh, it's, 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 it's the most fair Pokemon that we have right now. And sure enough, it's just very solid to continually give your opponent the potential to have a dead hand and lose. Yeah, uh, it, it's pretty crazy. And I think we're going to see it a lot more. Uh, this format is filled with Lost Zone, and Arceus tends to do pretty well against Lost Zone decks. Yeah, it's lined up very strong. I, I love the addition of the Charon's Care, just thinking about uh, trying to avoid those uh, those setups, especially the Sableye Lost, uh, Lost Mine. Uh, we've seen that with not being able to line up those choice belts at the right time, and it really it came in clutch as just Rahul was always at least one prize behind trying to work out everything that he needed. Echoing Horn wasn't there on that one turn he needed it. Maybe if we saw it as that that next card that we did, if it was one turn earlier, uh, could have been a game three lined up. Yeah, uh, it just rough draws for Rahul there. Uh, having to get rid of both choice belts in the Lost Zone early, not finding Chorus in that game one. Uh, you're already up against a matchup that's kind of unfavored for you on paper. And to see that, it's just, there's not much you can do. Yeah, you have a game plan, of course. You you understand now how easy it is to line up these knockouts. You you can take those two easy knockouts on the basic Pokemon, you bring it back, and you take the second one, of course, and uh, you get the chip damage lined up. But if you don't have the right cards, uh, you, I mean, you never can set them up in your hand. They're always going to be shuffled right back in with the judge, and Rahul just couldn't find them. And usually you have to have something like Beach Court, Pokestop, and multiple Comfes lined up ready to go. Just 